you're starting to get ready for class, giving y'all all time to log in. We still have one minute till class. So, okay, so here's your pencils. So one minute countdown, we're getting ready. Everyone, come on in the classroom. Let's get ready for art class. Are we ready? Okay. <laughs> Tell me when to go. <laughs> and I feel like we it's should have one. a countdown. Oh, it's one o'clock. All right, come on in the classroom. Welcome to art class today. We are so excited for you to join us. Today, I have my youngest, Tate, to help me today. And we're going to be drawing birds and then using our watercolor techniques on those. So it's our watercolor bird lesson. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your drawings. I saw more. I saw even people that have uh, logged on and seen Monday's face lesson. I'm seeing some of those. I'm seeing your houses and all sorts of wonderful things. So please send those. As your teacher, I am so happy to get those and um, to see all the hard work that you're putting into this. And I'm super proud of all of y'all. And today, almost the sun came out, but it wasn't raining. And this morning I was out walking and I walked by the most delicious smelling tree. I don't know what kind of flower it was, but it smelled so good. And it just made me think of spring, which was what inspired this lesson. So. If you're, I know we have some from Australia, so I think you're going into fall now, um, but you may still have your birds chirping. Um, Brisbane, Australia, I know I, I sent a message to one family there. Um, and uh, so you may still have your birds chirping, but if you have a chance while we're all inside, open a window, go outside, you know, try and watch for those birds. And remember that art is all about observing. So as artists, and everyone, I've seen your work, everyone out there that's come to class today is an artist, um, you wanna be watching and looking at those things. And remember, drawing is made up of little parts. So when we go through our little parts today, I want you to remember those when you're looking at birds. I do like to paint birds. These are just a few of my acrylic painting sketches. I'm gonna put up and show you um, when I'm actually painting birds. I like to, are those gonna glare on them? I've got Talia and Michaela and Keaton here today and Tate. So, you know, these are made of the same components. You wanna hold one, Tate? There you go, buddy, thanks. Um, these are made of the same components that we're gonna use our drawing uh, in our drawing today. And so it's breaking down the head shape and the body shape and the wings and the tails. So I just wanted you to know that what you're doing in any form or fashion today really can be built up as you learn more into something like this because it's all the same basic parts and pieces. So we're gonna put these to the side. You are an excellent Vanna White. And put those over there. Now, before we get started drawing, I want you to know that I post these videos afterwards because sometimes with the drawing, I have to go at a little faster pace to make sure we're gonna get everything in class today. If for some reason you get behind in the details, don't worry, we post the videos directly afterwards to Facebook and to YouTube. Now, the YouTube is under my name, which is spelled a little funny, but so I'm gonna go ahead and write it up here. It's K I J S A. That's my first name, Kisa. And then Houseman, H O U S M A N. Right there. So if you go to YouTube, you can get that. Um, in fact, if you just look that up, you can probably find me everywhere. Um, so, are you ready to draw some birds today? Oh, I forgot one other thing that makes Tate think of this. Tate's birthday is in March, and it looks like we're gonna be having a super fun at-home birthday party with the fam, and you may have had an at-home birthday party this week too. So if so, since it's Friday, it's our last day of class for the week, 
Um, I do want to say happy birthday to anyone that's had a birthday. So if you'll send in your first name and that it was your birthday this week, we're all gonna give you a big happy birthday round at the end of class today. So Michaela and Talia will write those down for me. Um, so, because why not have a birdie birthday party today? Birdie birthday party. Okay, let's go. Is mom silly sometimes? Okay, so let's start drawing our birds. Grab your pencils and paper. Now, we're gonna be actually, I'm going to draw on here so you can see what I'm drawing. I want you to draw on your watercolor paper because we're gonna apply our watercolor to this drawing. So, when we get halfway through class, we're gonna put down our pencils and pick up our brushes and utilize some of those techniques from yesterday. Don't worry, if you don't have watercolor, just keep on drawing and enjoy and learn how to add color. And if you didn't watch yesterday's lesson, don't worry, you're gonna learn something today. So, ready? You wanna grab your charcoal, either one, whichever one you want. And we're gonna start by drawing the bird body. Now, where it looks kind of to do this, we're gonna start right in the middle of the page with basically a teardrop type of shape. Now, you'll notice this is going to be the bird body and the tail's gonna come down here. Birds are aerodynamic, like airplanes, although birds came first. But so this is where the, what, the when they're flying, this is how the air is going, okay? Now we're going to work with the bird head. Right about here, we're gonna put a circle and you want it to be in relation smaller than this, just resting on top. Go for it, baby. Yep. Now, this is where you really start to break down the bird's body. The nice thing about the bird is that we only have to deal with two feet, so we don't have to worry about arms and all those other things. And that most of the shapes, okay, they wanna see what you're drawing, baby. Okay, so we've got our bird head and our bird body. Now, we're gonna drop in our bird wing. So this is gonna be our top. We're gonna start about here, we got right about there, yep. And we're gonna put our bird wing shape in. And I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger. Notice it's another teardrop shape, just a little bit elongated. Yep, looking good. So how's everyone doing? So it's starting, you can see where it's coming to be a bird, but what happens is the shapes don't stay just shapes, we're gonna connect them. So we're gonna come along with the top of the head and we're gonna make smooth that line out and connect it from the head across to the body and the wing, yep. We're gonna do that same idea with right underneath here. We're gonna connect. It's almost, you're giving the bird a neck right here. This is what we're doing. Now, does anyone know what would make a bird really look like a bird? Do you have a guess? Well, we do need an eye but what does a bird, you think of with a bird? That's right. What would the bird nose be or mouth and be their beak? So we're gonna put a beak here. Now what happens with the bird is it usually kind of comes in a little bit, something like that. It comes into their face a little bit, just like that. And we'll let it go there. You can make yours pointier now, if I want to change where the bird is looking, I don't change the eye, I change the beak. So if I want the bird to look up high, I put the beak up here. If I want the bird looking down, I put the beak. Because the eye stays pretty much about right here. Yeah, let's give the birdie an eye. So now, let's add a little tail onto our bird. Let's see, here we go. I'm gonna make mine a little bit long. So this is the long shape coming off here. That's right. Right below where we put the wing and coming right off the end of that first teardrop shape we drew. Okay. Now, how is our bird standing? With feet, that's right. 
So right about here, about halfway between our wing, we're gonna give it a little foot. Now bird's feet typically angle out because they're resting on something, like this, and they tend to have two little, I don't know, birdie toes, birdie toes, like that. There you go. So you're gonna put two in the front and one in the back. This is so they could grab onto uh, a pole or uh, wherever they're gonna be sitting. You've got that tape. Good job. And then, how's everyone doing? We got our birds. Now see how we just really took about five shapes and put those together and we came up with a bird. We've got our teardrop shape. So we've got that aerodynamic. We've got our wing right here, another teardrop shape. And do we have a question, Tanya? Um, can you draw a little darker thicken line? Yeah, let me thicken those up for you and I'll show you. That'd be a great way to show you where those shapes are. So there's our first teardrop shape. You see where that is? Is that helping? Tate, you darken yours too. There's our wing shape. There's our head shape. Remember our circle? But then we connected it to make a neck. We all able to see that a little bit better? I'm using charcoal to draw because I have a nice big compressed charcoal stick in the hopes that you can see that. We've got our tail. And I put a little notch in the end of mine. You can make yours end however you want. And then can we see our legs? How's everyone's bird? How many legs? We're just gonna do one leg and pretend that they're back to back. If you wanna add a second leg, you do the same thing. Well, do y'all wanna have a second leg? Everyone good for two? I'll show you how to add a second one. Because, remember how when we did our cubes the other day when we were drawing houses and we put a square in front and a square behind? It's almost like you're doing that with the legs where because the leg is on the other side of the body, it's gonna be behind. So let's give it the leg over here. We'll give it another leg. That's the nice thing about doing drawings. The more you do, you can adjust and add. You can do a bird after this class with one leg. You can do a bird with two legs. You can do a bird with the beak facing up or down, depending on how you want it to look. So I like your bird tape. Okay, so now we're gonna add some of the details to the wings. You ready? Okay, you got it. So usually there's a layers of wing, a layers of feathers on the wings, and they change shape. And so we're gonna represent that with three lines. So this will be our first layer of feathers. Yep. And this will be our second layer of feathers. And that's gonna show our third layer of feathers. Usually I leave this pretty basic because the feathers seem to be a little bit bigger there. And I start by adding in our next layer of feathers. So right here, is everyone ready to get on our wings? So I put in following these lines like this, space to about, I'm gonna be able to get about four or five lines in mine. And Tate has four, there you go, that's perfect. Yeah, Tate, they wanna see your bird because you're doing a great job, okay? Now the feathers might get even smaller here. So, here we go. I'm gonna scoot you in just a little bit. Here we go. How about that, guys? We're gonna make these lines even smaller, so we're gonna add more lines, which makes the feathers smaller. So I'm gonna try to make them really close together, Tate, over there. So you end up with that. Okay, you wanna stand back so they can see? Looking good, guys. 
Are you ready? And we're gonna add some feathers to the tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw some, about three lines right here and get feathers on our tail. Good job. So, are you starting to see a bird? This really breaks down several things. So we're gonna mark lots of times, birds will have something, um, they'll have a little different colored head or they'll have a signature color. Lots of times it's used for their habitat or camouflage or some sort of distinction. So I'm gonna give him where his head color would change a little bit. Almost like I'm giving him a little necklace. I'm gonna do that right there. Mm -hmm. So like on a robin, you might get, remember they have a red breast. And um, then usually their feathers change underneath. They're usually a little bit finer and simpler. So we're gonna give it a couple lines for our feathers to change underneath. Good job. Yeah, great job, Tate. Okay, how's everyone's bird? While you're finishing that and you're getting those all together on your watercolor paper, I am going to um, just go back over. We've got our circle for our head, our teardrop for our body, our teardrop for our wing, our long tail, our feet, and then we started breaking down the feathers. Big, medium, small, lots of vertical lines, changing our head color and changing our thing. When we're doing right now, because we're working through a drawing step, normally we would practice some of these drawings and then we would move whichever sketch we like to our watercolor paper. Today, for the purpose of time and learning, we're gonna move straight into our watercolor paper and we're gonna talk about how you would do this with watercolor. Before Talia moves in closer for me, um, I have already done a quick sketch onto my watercolor paper and onto Tate's so that we could go ahead and use this. You do not need to have any of these supplies right now and you can just watch and learn some things um, that you might wanna use on your drawing later. The other thing is, uh, so let me show you what we're gonna be using. I have my salt from yesterday. I have my crayons showing our watercolors that we made. Um, I have something to blot or wipe, Q-tips, paper towels, something like that, and, um, and brushes and water ready to go. Now, what I wanted to do is this is a great way. Yesterday when we were playing with those watercolors in class and you were all joining me and I saw people were writing, they sent me their secret messages that they wrote um, using the crayons. We talked about um, wax resisting. So we're gonna utilize the wax resist. We also had some great ideas of, um, uh, sorry, this is like truly live. Tate had to run and he'll be right back. So, um, but it's a mom life. This <laughs> so, but when you put the wax onto your paper, what happens is the water will not stick anywhere the wax is. So that's a great way to utilize that on our birds. So Talia, if you wanna come up, everyone while she's gonna come closer to the drawing so you can see what I'm using for watercolor, grab the lightest color crayon or wax you have available to you and we're gonna come in and mark some of our things. You got it? Okay. So I have a white and I have a light pink. I'm gonna use this light pink just so you can see. Because the wings are gonna be light, I'm gonna go ahead and outline our wing there. Right there. And I'm pressing hard, so I'm putting lots of wax onto it. Then I'm gonna come along all those little shapes that we did, all those feather lines. Let's go ahead and give those distinct lines. I'm pressing hard with my crayon. So right here, you can see it very subtly, but I want, when I touch it, I want to be able to feel the crayon on there. I want to know that I have wax on my paper. So we're going to continue to outline all those little wing shapes. Okay. 
You can even come along and do this. I'm gonna add extra, make sure my lines are nice and thick while everyone's putting their crayons on. Now, if you are at have just tons of supplies in your house, oil pastels work for this, um, and if you don't have crayons, uh, birthday candles work for this. So that was a brilliant suggestion yesterday. So everyone have their wings crayoned in. Excellent, you have your wing crayoned in. We're gonna grab a brush. Can you see my watercolors I already went ahead and wet some right here. And Tate, you're gonna use these over here. There's some blue for you. I'll wet that. And we're gonna have a blue bird. So let's see what happens when we come in with our watercolors. Let's get our wing. You see what happens with your resist? Fill that in. Look at that. Oops, did we lose our camera? Sorry guys. I'm gonna let Tate get his all painted in too. In the meantime, let's see. So what I want you to do is while, um, if anyone's finished here, I want you to do the same with the tail. We're gonna repeat that with the tail right here. Making sure I have lots of wax. I'm pressing really hard. If you can see how I'm holding the crayon, I'm really pressing down into the paper because the more wax, see how I got that nice thick line? We're gonna give him a blue tail as well. So how's everyone doing? Do we have a start of our bluebird here? So there's fancy words. You can do this um, in watercolor. When I get in some of my finer watercolors, there's a product, it's called um, Frisket by name, and Frisket sounds kind of funny, but that's what you can use. It's, it's a rubbery um, substance you paint onto your watercolor paper, you let dry overnight or several hours, and then you can paint right on top of it, and then you can remove it afterwards and it'll reveal the white of the paper. So that's called frisket. Okay, I'm gonna darken up the body a little bit. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of purple into my blue. If you don't have purple, what two colors? Y'all can send this in on, on messages. What two colors make purple? Who's the first one we get? Michaela. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay, okay. Who remembers what two colors make purple? You got it? No? Okay, I'll just have to tell you. Red oh, and... Oh, oh. oh, Lisa said blue and red. Phil said blue and red. Lisa and Phil, thumbs up to you. Blue and red, you're right. So we're gonna come along that wing and we're gonna make this body a little bit darker right here. So, you getting some of mine too, Tate? You're gonna share mine. So you see how when I add that blue, I'm gonna come up to that necklace line, remember that? So now here's a place that will look really neat while you have it all nice and painted, if you used a little salt yesterday, I'm gonna put a little in my hand, and you remember what it did, here's a place where you can sprinkle a little salt along the belly right there. Yep. You have some in your hand, baby? There you go, there you go. Along in the belly right there. So what that will do is that will give that speckled little, um, little uh, robin's breast right there. Although a robin would be a different color. So we're gonna continue down here, not putting that 
right here. And continuing with the rest. I'm gonna add a little red in mine. I think I'd like to see what happens with that. That's where my feathers are blending in. Now, do you remember when we had the water all, when we made the shapes and you had lots of water and you could move it around? Or you remember when you were working on the gradients, you could make this a gradient as well. Putting all your color in right here and pushing it up. So how's everyone doing? Now, another thing, we're gonna work on the beak. And do you remember the shape fill in from the heart yesterday? Oops, I have extra salt on my paper. So I'm gonna take plain water and I'm gonna fill in that beak shape right there. And then I'm gonna take a little yellow and I'm gonna fill it all in right there. Okay. How's everyone doing? Of our birds? So, I am feeling I would like to be in a tropical climate, so I'm gonna go with a different color on my head. You can choose to stick with the blue and stay there. You can choose to go with this lighter color and continue it off. I'm gonna add a little bit of green. The one thing you want to be very careful of is because we have this area very wet, if I get the green right next to that yellow, it'll shoot right into there and you'll get all sorts of green in your beak. So we're gonna try and not do that. So I'm gonna make a green head on my bird. What color are you gonna make, Tate? You wanna make green as well? So I'm just gonna take a little green and work it down. And then I'm not gonna add any more paint, I'm just gonna add water as I move that down close to my other colors. Okay, see how we're using those gradient techniques from yesterday? So I started with my color up here at the top, and because these two areas are recently painted and wet, I'm gonna work down towards those so I keep most of my pigment up there at the top. And I like that green so much, I might add a little bit down here into my tail. Right there. And then to finish up, Looks fantastic, Tate. To finish up, we're gonna add a little yellow down to the feet and just paint in. Okay, and finish out our bird. Now I always like to finish out all my birds with something for them to stand on, so I'm gonna give my bird a little bit of ground. Okay, T, while they're working on theirs, we can step back and um, I'll go ahead and finish up and tell them about what we're going to do next week. And let's see how they're all, all their pieces are coming together. So, so now while you're working on your birds, I want to encourage you to play with this. And I want you also to see how everything we've done kind of plays a part in the next things we're doing. That's how art works. You learn something and then you put it into your next piece and then you learn something and you put it into the next piece. So always know that this doesn't have to be finished. This is just a step in your art journey to your next beautiful work. I'm gonna hold it up in just a minute but water will run down the page. So, um, And so everything we've done today, even tips on drawing the faces, you could use the baking sheet and draw these birds and use that smudging technique that we did on Monday. On Tuesday, when we did Picasso's, you could do a puff paint bird. How much fun! Or you could draw a bird and use that puff paint and make your greenery that it might sit amongst a plant. On Wednesday, when we did our houses, we learned about making the spaces look dimensional. That's the type of thing. You can make a birdhouse for your bird. We also talked about how the feet can be dimensional by thinking that it's on the other side of the body. 
And yesterday with our watercolor lesson, we learned how to move that paint across the paper and how to make that paint do different things from what we had inside our house. And today we tried to put it all together in something that's fun and reminds us of outside and sunshine and spring and just happiness. So I'm waiting for mine to draw a little bit and we'll show you that at the end. But I want to talk to you about next week. I'll be posting what we're doing next week on all the supplies. Remember, class is in session starting Monday, next week at 1 p.m. Oh, Tate is going crazy with the, with the salt. So you get the weekend off just like we're in school because we are, we're in art school here. And go ahead and go crazy with your salt and you do some watercolor paintings. And then um, get ready for next week. I'll be posting supply lists in the morning. So check any time over the weekend. The one thing, many of these lessons I utilize um, a lot of supplies we have, normally, when I'm teaching in class, I utilize a lot of supplies I have in the studio. Well, I'm trying to be very mindful of trying to use things that you have inside your house. So I'm adjusting lessons, I'm uh, trying to think of new ways to do things that we can utilize everyday household items. Oh, I love your bird! It's so good. Um, and, um, I want you to lay it down. And so, if I put something down, feel free to substitute at any time. Also ask questions while we're online. And um, Tate, you wanna say thank you? Oh, actually, Tate's gonna have me say, say happy birthday to everybody. Let's see, we have a list here. Oh my goodness, hello March birthdays. Tate, you wanna say happy birthday to, and I hope you've had an awesome week celebrating, Shana. Tegan, Layla, Zabin, Lydia, oh, come on. Andy, Maddie, Isabella, Emma, CJ, Vinny, Ethan, Alexis, Megan, he's saying them really quiet, Nino, Maddie, Melvin Luke Fisher, Oh, and I think uh, Liam and Mackenzie, Alexis and Maddie as well. Happy birthday. We're going to high five for you. It's my son, so we don't have to social distance currently. So happy birthday to y'all. We'll see you at art class on Monday, 1 p.m. Central Time. Don't worry, we post these to YouTube um, on at Kisa Houseman. And remember, my favorite quote is art is man's nature. Nature is God's art. See you on Monday.